Christine with Luma Booth. I am here today with Drew Escar Sega. Yeah, or uh, just online, Drew Christopher, but um, Drew last Christopher. name is a little hard. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, Drew is a long term user of Luma Booth, so he is going to show you how to start your first photo booth experience. Uh, Drew, if you want to take it away. Yeah, thanks, Christine. So, um, about me, um, you, some of you may know me as Hustle with Drew on YouTube. Um, I make photo booth related content, specifically iPad photo booth content. Um, been in the industry for about eight years, but when it comes to iPad booths for about four years now. And um, I also have a business called Photo Booth 101, where we have uh, iPad booth shelves for sale, really affordable stuff. Um, we also include training, um, you know, stuff that you'll need when starting your business. So um, that's pretty much sums up my intro. That's about it. But um, yeah, um, <clears throat> let's hop right into it, guys. I'm going to go ahead and sh uh, start sharing my screen to start this demonstration. Okay. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and launch Lua Booth. And um, <clears throat> this is the screen you'll see when you launch um, the app. Um, so we're going to basically show you guys how to set up your first photo event. Um, you're going to want to create the event. As you can see, my account, these are just past events. So uh, to start your event, to create it, you're going to click to the bottom left where it says new event. And this is what you'll see next. And this is really important. This is what you're going to name your event. It's how you identify the event when you're ready to um, launch the app. So you're going to click here. So we're going to just make up a pretend event. Let's just assume it's a wedding. Let's, we'll just put the name of the bride and groom, Montse and Drew. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and hit launch. And then you'll see this is the welcome screen, but we're going to go ahead and do the settings. So the top right drop down button, press that. And then we're going to, um, first thing we're going to want to do is to create the template, which is very easy with Luma Booth. You're going to press the uh, print layout button. You'll see that in red. And then right here. So this will be basically where you customize your layout. Um, you can definitely do other uh, formats. This would be the four by six. So if you see the layout uh, section on the right, you can hit preset and you can, you, as you guys can see, there's a lot of options here to choose from. Uh, there's the two by six, which is your traditional standard um, photo booth template, but we like to use the four by six. So we'll just stick to that. Um, right here, it'll um, customize. When you first press it, you'll see that there will be four photos. Um, the one represents the first photo that will be taken. The second will be the second and so on. So we're going to go ahead and delete the fourth photo by just pressing it and then hitting the delete button. And um, next up, I just wanted to demonstrate how to add an image. So um, some artwork. So let's just say your client, your customer wants you to add um, wedding rings. So you'd be under place section where it says add image, you're going to want to press that. And then, you know, obviously we have a bunch of artwork here already. Um, you would just search for the image you have on here. Um, this is a PNG file, um, so it's transparent. Um, you could use a JPEG, but sometimes with JPEGs, there would be borders, and um, it just looks better when it's transparent for most things. So let's just add this here. And the next thing we're going to want to do is add some text, because what template is complete without text? You're going to want to hit the text button under the play section. And then here you can press the uh, selected item, and then basically add whatever text you want. Let's just write married, explanation point. And from here, you can adjust where you put the text to, not, not just the text, but also all of the images by um, a coordinate section. So you look to the under selected item, you can enter the coordinates, or kind of just maneuver it to where you want. Let's just say right there is good. And uh, next up, you guys, you can actually change the font. There are tons of fonts available. Uh, sorry, let me see. There are tons of fonts available in this app. As you can see right here, you have a lot of options. You can um, also, too recently, you can also add your own fonts into the software. We like to use a website called defont.com um, and have our customers choose a font, then we download it and upload that to Luma Booth. But for this demonstration, let's just keep it simple. Let's just assume this is great. And then right next to the font, you can actually change the color. 
And what I love is there's actually a way to enter a color code. So if there's a specific color that you want, you can literally just enter it right here, which is great. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and just choose mm, this color here. <laughs> so um, let's just assume for the sake of uh, keeping this short that this template is complete. Um, we're going to want to go ahead and move on to settings, capture settings. So you're going to click the drop down menu and we're going to go to capture mode. So before we get into the settings, I just want to just explain what the uh, mode this uh, part is here. You'll see four, uh, four of the buttons. One is photo, GIF, boomerang, slash uh, 360, and then video. These are just the experiences that Luma Booth has um, available for um, users. So we're going to deselect these just because we're doing photo only. Um, probably in a, a future live or video, we can go over everything else. So we're only going to keep the photo one active here. So let's go to the settings, capture settings. So these are basically the settings of all of the experiences that are available. Um, and again, you have the GIF, Boomerang, and then down here, video. But we're just going to focus on photo because this is what we're talking about today. The first thing you'll see, it says uh, before photo one, there is, it's set to five seconds. And what this means, uh, the before photo one, that just means how much time is um, happening before, um, so I'm sorry, since the user presses the photo button to start the photo booth, that's how much time, how much time goes by until the first photo is taken. So if we have this set to one, you can imagine you press the photo button, well, only one second's gonna go by before the photo's taken. To me, I don't think that's enough time. I think five seconds would be the minimum, but I think the sweet spot personally is around seven seconds. And um, it's just your own preference. You know, if, if, if you're doing your first event, I highly recommend setting everything up and doing some practice photos just to make sure that these settings make sense. And then uh, right below that, uh, where it says before photos in parentheses, all others. Um, this just means how much time goes by from the first photo to the second photo, and then from the second photo to the third photo and so on. Um, I think five seconds is good. You don't need as much time um, for the first one because you know people are, should be in position and um, five seconds seems to be the sweet spot. But again, to each their own, this is something you can figure out just by testing it. And then uh, below this, you'll see e uh, delay each photo. Um, what this means is how long will the photo that was just taken be displayed on the iPad? And this is really important because this is kind of where the fun happens. You know, just imagine the bride and groom taking a photo with the photo booth. It happens, and then they see the photo, and that's where the enjoyment happens. So I like to do one, to, I think, no longer than three seconds. Two seconds would be good. That way, you know, you want the photo booth to keep, um, you know, uh, you want it to go smoothly, and you don't want the photo sessions to take too long because that can create a long line if you're out of your vet. So just play around with it. Two seconds is pretty good. And then uh, that's pretty much it for the capture settings. Let's move forward and talk about um, sharing. Yeah, so we have the settings down now for photo. Let's go talk about sharing. You'll see to the uh, column to the right where it says sharing and add-ons. You can click email and SMS. What this means is how will the guests get their photos? What are the options? So you'll see um, you can actually have email enabled. Um, and I love the fact that all of this is customizable so you can put a reply to email and enter an email address and you can customize the subject. So you could put here is your photo from, you could put your photo booth company's um, name in that. And that's great for branding, you know, so um, we love to do that to add our name. And then in the body, you can also customize that as well. You can add an image, you can attach a uh, URL and there's just so much that this app can do. And, you know, from our business, this is kind of where, uh, it stands out, and I absolutely love that that there's this feature. And then you'll see next to it, um, SMS, where uh, that's basically just a text message. Um, this will this one will be the one people put in the most um, that they'll use. And you can actually, um, I probably should have mentioned that you can actually turn these functions off and on. So let's just say there's a corporate event and they want to collect email data and they want email only, you would literally just come into this and just make sure that email is selected. That way there's no way for uh, people to text. But we'll just leave that on. Um, and again, you guys, there's you can customize the phone number down here just like you could with the email. And um, SMS is really, uh, it's it's been a game changer. We, we absolutely love the fact that users, can, uh, our customers can text their photos. 
Um, you'll see below is this Instagram. Um, I personally like to leave this off. I like to keep it simple with just email and SMS. And then let's move on to the next thing I wanted to talk about. Um, sharing settings. Okay, so this here, uh, these are other ways that guests can get their photos. Um, we like to keep AirDrop off, Twitter off. Um, and then it can also, you know, you'll see right here it says other ways to share, cloud sharing and QR code. We leave these on. So the three options, it's not just email and SMS. Um, you keep this, these settings on. It will also generate a QR code, which um, my customers absolutely lose their mind <laughs> when they see this function. Um, you know, nowadays everyone gets, does, operates their business with QR codes. If you go into a restaurant, if you want to access a menu, nine, nine out of 10 times now you use a QR code. So this is actually a great function to have because let's just say there's a, a group of six to eight people in a photo. Instead of everyone putting their email address in or typing in their number, if you just wait, you know, five to 10 seconds, depending on your internet connection, a QR code will pop up and everyone can scan it that way. So I love that, that um, Luma Booth has this option as well. Um, and I think that is pretty much it. These are just the basics. Um, let me see if I'm missing anything here. Yeah, so I think these are the basics. Um, before I sign off, let's just talk about the sharing screen. Uh, let's talk about the sharing screen section here um, where it says timeout on sharing screen. I have it set to 30 seconds. What this means is how much time will, um, so let's just say the last person puts their phone number in, how much time until the photo booth will go back to the welcome screen and allow the next user to use it. We have it set to 30 seconds. If you have it set to five or 10 seconds, that may not be enough time. You know, maybe someone may have turned around and talked to someone and then they, they may not have time to put their phone number in. So 30 seconds for us is what we like to do. Uh, where it says show original photos, allow guests to view and share photos by adding a thumbnail to the bottom left. Um, that would just allow guests to um, actually access the photos on the iPad. I like to keep that off just because it's just, I, the less time someone has to spend at the booth, the better. We can keep the line going. And then display retake button, um, I leave that on. You can actually change the name of that button, um, but we just leave it as retake. It's um, useful for when someone obviously doesn't like the photo they took. Maybe they weren't ready in time, or I think a lot of times they grab, they try to grab a prop and they don't have enough time to get posed. So um, yeah, that's pretty much the sharing section. And let me go ahead and exit this here and bring it back to Christine. Yep. All right. <laughs> Awesome. Thanks, Drew. Um, did you have anything else you wanted to add? Um, before the um, the questions? Yep, for the Q&A. Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just wanted to actually thank Luma Booth. You guys, um, it's been an amazing app and the progress from when I first started using the software to now and all the updates have been incredible. And um, I don't know if this is the time for me to mention this, but um, we do have a company called Photo Booth 101. Um, we sell the iPad Photo Booth shells, and I know I mentioned this in the intro, but uh, if you guys are interested, just go to Photo Booth 101. Um, my number's there. You guys can text me directly, and um, yeah, always willing to help. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Drew, if you want to stay on, if you want to help answer a couple of questions as I go along, um, we have just a handful of questions, so the Q&A will be pretty short. Mm -hmm. Um, so the major questions we get lately are, will we be supporting more languages in Luma Booth? Um, the answer is yes, we are working on this currently, so it should be in a relatively soon update. Um, we are currently in the process of translating, so this will be available in the near future. Um, another question is, will we be supporting DSLR cameras with Luma Booth? This is something we are looking into. It's not available now, um, and we're not sure when it will be available, but it is something we are looking into adding as we understand many of our customers are asking about it. Um, Drew added that uh, many customers ask about adding images from the Photos app. Um, with a change in iPad and iPhone, there was a change from being able to actually add from the Photos app. You must add from either the Files app, email, Google Drive, or Dropbox. Um, we do have a support article, which I will add to the comments section for anybody who has questions about that. Um, 
it's relatively easy. You could just move it from your files app to the um, from the photos app to the files app, and then it, you'll be able to add it no problem. Um, another question is: We get uh, about event link. How do you share an event link? If you are running the newest version of Luma Booth, at the top of Luma Booth, you click the drop down button at the top right, and you will see the sharing symbol. You click that, and it'll give you the option to share your link, and you can share that directly to your client. Um, so that'll give them the uh, access to photoshare.co and they'll be able to see all the photos so long as you have guest access um, checked in photoshare.co. Christine, you want me um, to, um, I can, sh I can show that really quick if you'd like. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. Let me go back to share real quick. Yeah. This is an, um, definitely a game changer because when we were, we do our events, uh, let me see, let me pull up quick time really quick. Yeah. So when we would do our events in the past, um, we'd have to hop on our phone to get this, um, to get the event link. Sorry, let me try to find QuickTime here. So the fact that we can do this now is, it's everything. I'm so excited that there's <laughs> this app. We can just get it, get the link and share it directly. Um, so I hope this isn't taking too long. Yeah, all right. Okay, cool. So let me just launch it really quick. So yeah, the drop down menu, we have the event. And then this link right here, you see where top right says launch event. Um, you'll see it to the, the little link. Boom, right there, you'd select it, copied. And yeah, you have the link, you could text it to yourself or airdrop it to your phone, then send it to your uh, client. And also too, once your event, I forgot to mention this, once your event is all ready, you literally just would hit launch event. And then you'd have it here where it says Kate's and um, Jack's wedding. Obviously, that would have been customizable about the welcome screen. We could have um, changed all that, but that would be for a separate video. But, but yeah, I just wanted to show that how easy it was to get the link. Um, let me get out of here real quick. Let's see. So we do have a couple yeah. questions that came through with the uh, live. So it says, um, Maria was asking, does the iPad have to be the kind that can have phone service? Um, so long as it has mobile data or an internet connection, either through Wi-Fi or the mobile data, it, you will be able to use it. Luma Booth does allow you to use it without any internet access, um, but you won't be able to share. So if you are just doing you know, photos and want to print them, you can use it without internet access, but internet access is recommended because you can use the QR code. Um, let's see. I know we are getting quite a few questions about the SMS. Um, this is something we're looking into. We understand it's more expensive for uh, users outside of the US. Um, currently we use Twilio. In the US it is cheaper because this is where we are based, um, but this is something we are looking into. We understand it's a sore spot for quite a few users, especially ones in you know, the European Union and South Africa. So we do see your concerns and we are looking into it. Let's see. Um, so one from Jared, if I share a link via SMS to a client, um, are they able to see all the videos from the album? So yes, yeah, so you can set this in photoshare.co. If you go to photoshare.co, you can turn on guest access. Guest access will allow users to see all the photos and videos in that event. If you uncheck guest access, it will turn it off so they can only see their video or their photo. They can't see the rest of them in the event. Um, let's see, and we got one more from Brad, um, how to align the preset photos to center perfectly. Um, so we are looking at a grid option to help um, align it with the background. So that's, that is something we're currently going to be working on. Um, it's not in the current version, but it is uh, an update that may be coming in the near future. Um, capture mode. Um, let's see, on capture mode under GIF, do I always have rectangle checked or square if I'm using same layout on different templates? Um, so if your template is um, horizontal your, and you create a GIF from those photos, the photos in the GIF will just be cropped into a square format. Um, Gift overlay, the overlay is set for the GIF itself where the template is only applied to photo sessions. So they're two totally different sessions. Um, what's the difference between GIF and photo? So GIF just takes photos and makes them move where photo is just, just you know, static image doesn't move at all. Um, I think that's all the questions we 
got. Um, yeah, looks like that's all the questions we got. Um, is there anything else you want to add, Drew, before we end the live? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to do uh, just just announce, you know, if, if you have um, any questions about Luma Booth or anything about the iPad photo booth business, um, my YouTube channel should be a resource. Uh, it's just Hustle with Drew at, uh, on YouTube. And yeah, we do content. I'm probably pushing out two to three videos a week. There's a lot of Luma Booth tutorials and just related to the business. So I just wanted to uh, plug that. And uh, just thanks for this opportunity. Looking forward to doing more of these and uh, hope it was a little helpful. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks you so much again, Drew. Um, we will be trying to do more lives in the future. Um, we'll be uh, setting up some different options about how to do video booths and gift booths and 360. Um, so if you guys have any questions or you guys want to see a certain video, just leave us a comment and we'll get to them in the future. All right. Thanks again, Drew. And thanks so much, everyone, for watching. And we'll tune in again soon.